Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of The Blue Shirt I Wore. On this week's episode we have somebody that needs no introduction whatsoever, Linfield's legendary striker, Peter Thompson. Thank you very much. Peter, thanks very much for taking time out to join us this evening. Your thoughts on coming back and with your story to tell. Yeah, it's good to see so many uh, shirts that have worn over the years and they all sort of have a little story behind them and a lot of you know, really good memories wearing them and uh, it's nice to see them again as well. Okay, Peter, before we get started on your early Linfield career, tell us a little bit about how you got started playing football. Um, I played for St Andrews, which was um, a boys' club from the Shankill Road area. Um, went up there and signed for them when I was probably about 12 or 13. Um, played for them until I was 16. Um, and at that age, a lot of the boys would have went across the water, or the boys didn't go, would have came to Linfield. So I came to Linfield, I think it was really under Dennis Shields, um, and then thought Mitchell as well was the under 18 manager at the time. Played a sort, sort of a few months with Philip in the 18s and then I was in the Swifts for a couple of years and to be honest I was starting to think I was never going to get my chance in the first team. Well, did. Tell us the feeling then what it was like when Big Davey gave you the call up then to make your debut. Um, so this shirt I would have wore um, quite a few times really coming on a sub in most of the matches. Um, didn't really start too many games, probably played about 10-12 games that season. Um, it's the same mainly off the bench but I can remember scoring first goal um, in that shirt so that sort of brings back a lot of happy memories and at that stage I didn't really wouldn't have thought I was going to score as many goals as I did but you know it was a certain point for me and uh, it was an important goal for me probably most people it wasn't it was a kind of shield game for free I think it was against Dodge um, but I can remember that game and there wasn't too many people here but it meant a lot, obviously, a lot to me over, uh, and for what came after it. What was the dressing room then like for yourself starting off so early on in your career? Um, <clears throat> it was really good. The dressing room was great over all the years, to be honest. Uh, very supportive teammates. The, you know, the senior players were always, always really good. Um, we would have had some young players in that team as well, probably. Uh, Galti would have been there wearing that shirt. Um, was it Stephen Small was playing then? Stephen as well? Shaw. Stephen oh, Shaw. Shaw. Yeah, yeah. Stephen, that was yeah. I think Stephen Shaw had a, a year that season. Maybe he scored fifteen goals in midfield. I think it was that season. Um, so he yeah he was a regular. I played with him in the, in the Swifts as well for about a year or so. And then he got the move up. So really it was just me looking at Galti and Stephen and Al Manis at that stage, thinking right that's something I want to go on and get into the first team, work hard, and try to get my chance and take a chance if it, if it came along. Okay, moving on then to the next couple of kits. Yeah. This would have been the season then where you really started making your breakthrough into the first team? Yeah, that would have been the year I played probably nearly every, well, most, match, most matches. Um, became a regular and um, scored, I think I scored 27 goals that year. Um, so that was a really, you know, it brings back a lot of memories too. I wore it obviously that shirt for the, because I think that was for two seasons, so I wore that for the Swifts as well. Um, but yeah, I remember playing that one and had a lot of lot of good games that season, getting to the Satanta Cup final and that in the end. Have you many good memories of wearing that shirt, especially? Tell the folks at home a little bit about can, their experience of like wearing that shirt, especially in your first big two game and score. Yeah, I can remember wearing that actually when probably the game that stands out early on wearing that would be it was a I think the League Cup started the, the season um, back, uh, yeah, back early then. on. Yeah. So the group stage games um, we played Crusaders. Uh, scored a hat trick in that, and I can remember thinking that maybe would be a chance. For, I think Chris Morgan had left that summer. I'm sort of thinking, right, this could You're going to get starting the next week, you've scored a hat trick. Well, I'm thinking that was <laughs> my way of getting into the team. Uh, I think Glenn might have got injured. I think he might have at, at that stage as well. I know he did at some stage that season, he got a, I think, a groin injury, put him out for months. So, I kind of, that, that probably gave me an opportunity to get a run in games, which as a young player, as a striker, I feel it's difficult, you know, to, to get that opportunity. And, um, yeah, I think I got in that year. I say I scored a hat trick and then I scored an over a couple of goals early after that. I, there's a goal. Sort of build it a there's a goal that. for me stands out this season was uh, we drew the Glens away. Irish Cup yes. was Paul McAreevy gets sent yes, off. Yes, that's for, right. That was, uh, that was a really good <laughs> for the headbutt early on. Out, yes, and you know we were sort of battering the Glens for a while with ten men and then you happened to pop up and yeah. score and oh, they equalised late on and then we lost three. Was that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, I believe you were well that game. As I well. was. I can remember being yeah. Lying in bed that afternoon, thinking, I have no way I'm going to play this match. And I obviously really wanted to play. Oh, yeah. And I got, got there about like, half, four, or five, and I had to ring, ring Davey and say, like, There's no chance I'm playing here. I feel horrendous. It's hard to like, even walk. And I was like, There's no chance I'm playing this game. 
I remember Lan listening to it in the radio and I was like, <laughs> couldn't believe I'd lost it. Like, because I thought after, you know, playing so well with just as the you, 10 yeah. men, I thought we'll go on and do it in the second in the second game in the replay. But one of those things, it just wasn't that to be that year in, in the cup. But, you know, make it up for it down the line anyway. Being a Linfield fan yourself, just how special was it then? Especially yeah. the score against the Glens? Yeah, all those moments for me, you know, the first time I did anything in, in the Linfield shirt meant, meant a lot. You know, I'm sure it does for everybody and even the guys who, who weren't supporters. But for, for me, it, it, was, it was special to play. Firstly, to play in a big two game and then the score in them and the win medals for Linfield down the line as well. They were all special things and something that I'd always wanted to do. Is there one medal stands out in particular amongst all others? Um, well, probably the, the Irish Cup, probably the one will win the, the Cancer Glens and won the clean sweep. That probably stands out. Um, all the Irish Cups really were the ones that stood up to me because the Cup finals are special, whereas the league, as much as you wanted to win that, it wasn't by the time you won it was almost an anti-climax. You know, it was very unless <laughs> you went, we were back then we were so far clear. <laughs> yeah. Unless you went in the last day of the season, you know, which I don't think we did, it wasn't really the same you know, the same atmosphere as you got World Cup final. Um but I'm trying to think the, the first medal I made of one was probably wearing that shirt and the I think I won the County Adam Shield that season. I think big Crusaders in that shirt. I think we beat them in that, so that was probably the first medal of the one. Um, so obviously the first time you win a medal it's, it's important even though it was the sort of the, the least important one but when you're in the field you want to win every, every tournament. Okay Peter moving on to the away shirts from that season tell us a little bit about what you remember from them. Um, well, the, the, I don't remember too much about it. I remember the red one we played away to Korean um, and I scored and I think we had a good win up there in that game so those are the kind of things that stick out. Uh, I think the white one against Portadown I think it was a goal. Uh, away to Portadown, obviously we had to wear white probably obviously because the the red bit clashed. Uh -huh. But uh, I would have wore them against Newry as well maybe. But again, most of the time I suppose we were blue. But I, I can remember scored against um, Corian in the red one and Portadown in the white one. That season. Okay, then moving on to a season that will always live in memory for a lot of Linfield fans is the clean yeah. sweep season. I'm sure you've plenty of memories of these shirts, especially yeah. with. Your strike partnership that you have with Glenn Ferguson? Yeah, that, that stage me and Glenn have probably been playing most of the season before, although I think, as I said, he was injured for a bit of it. But at that stage, everything started to, to really click for us as a, a partnership and as a team because we are playing a really good team. They created lots of chances. It was, I know it's, people always say it, but it was actually easy to score goals in that team because if you missed a chance or two, you knew... You were getting you, a few you chances knew that again. Wasn't it. You know, if you missed a chance after 10 minutes, you, you didn't worry and think, that's, oh, I'm not going to score today. You knew you had another opportunity along the line. Um, and we just, particularly at the beginning of the season, um, we went out and hammered teams. I can remember one week, I think, I ended up scoring, I think, three hat tricks in a row on a Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. And you're going, I think, got 10 goals in a week. And you're going, well, that's getting your, your goals up for the season if you're doing that. And then, I think that was Institute, Corey, and Dungana. And we were just blowing teams away. And I think at that stage, teams were near, were near enough a goal down before they even went out onto the pitch because um, they were in such good form that season. Your memories of the clean sweep season itself, what springs to mind? Obviously, the four trophy success. Yeah, the, the cup final. I just remember the momentum building the whole season. You know, it wasn't something we really talked about it, winning everything, but, but, but kind of, I think, under, underneath it, we're all probably our, ourselves were striving for that. You know, we knew it was a special team. Um, I don't think we got too many injuries that year because it was a settled team. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably about really 13, 14 players who really you know played you know the majority of the games. And if you're getting that luck, uh, you know as a team in a sense, it's you know it sets you up well. And um, we went in good runs in the cups, and the momentum was just kept building after we won the, uh, the first uh, trophy. I think was the it was, in the kind of shield. shield. Uh, yeah, the, it, it, always, it always stands out for me that night against Palomino because. Balamina went one 0 up, and Kevin yeah. Kelby had that chance, and it bobbled yeah. as he hit it, and it hit the bar. And then obviously things could have been so differently, but I think it was Spike and Orn coming off the bench to score that night. Yeah, that was a hard match. We didn't. I don't think we played that well, and it was it was down at Seaview, and it was tight, and uh, you know they they had a good team, and they they made it difficult for us. And I think around that spell too, we had a little bit of I wouldn't say a blip, but we we're probably. Maybe just not winning as comfortably. Mm, we're getting a bit of fatigue, I think. Um, it's happening then probably because it was again everybody was playing so many matches, um, and we went because I know we played lock all in a replay, wearing the white one. I remember going down to wear the white kit at lock all mm -hmm. on a Tuesday night because we drew it home to them in the cup, 
Uh, and I remember having to change the kit at half time. Big guy, I don't think was too happy because <laughs> the kit was absolutely stinking. Obviously, we're on weight, and we ended up because it was so wet and, and mucky. We ended up wearing high two in the wash. So I don't think he'd be too happy with that. That that season, obviously the season before, that shirt was worn. Fantastic night, beating Shelburne in the Santander Cup yeah. final. How much? of a catalyst do you think winning that was to set us up for the following season? Oh I definitely think that was the that was the thing that pushed us on. Obviously we had the disappointment before that of, of losing the league at, at the Oval but I think probably that and then obviously going on and winning the, that Santander Cup definitely um, helped us build momentum for going into the next season. I think we actually definitely got around a free around in Europe I think as well which we hadn't maybe done in a while so everything was sort of building going into the new season. Um, to have to have a really special season. What was your thoughts on the Santanta Cup final, given the fact, like, what sort of preparations did you have in place, especially for yourself? Because I know when I spoke to Michael and Glenn about it, they were sort of basically saying they were going down on the bus, oh. saying if we keep it down to two, yeah, that's that, good. that was true. Everybody, we went with no real expectation. Of, I wouldn't say not win the game because you go into every game. Okay, okay, of you course. You don't go in thinking you're going to lose, but oh. we, we knew what we were up against. They were a, a really good team. They had players, really good players, and, had, and the, I think they nearly got into the, the group stage of the Champions League, I think, that <laughs> year before. Yeah, it was against you know, Deportivo. And, yeah. and they were a really, really strong side, and it was at, at their ground as well, and mm -hmm. in the middle of their season, it would have been, whereas ours was kind of, ours was winding down, and we had probably, we had probably played only two games in about three weeks or something at mm -hmm. that stage, which well, we had to, idea, we had to go, We had to go to the Oval. I think that was on the, on the, it was like on the Monday or Tuesday night, yeah. and then we had to win that game to get into the final. Yeah, I don't know if that was the final. I can't remember if the final was that Saturday or the Saturday after. Uh -huh. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But it seemed like there was a big gap in between mm -hmm. um, the games. I don't know, but it, just maybe because we've been playing so many, so many games that season at that point, it probably just seemed like it was more spread out. But it just <laughs> I can remember thinking, you know, we hadn't played, but then it may have helped us for a bit. The guys who retired and stuff, and we played so many games, it gave us a bit of a break before. Before the final, then Irish Cup final that season. Yeah, <coughs> two goals for yourself, especially the first goal. I'm sure you remember it. Yeah, Plenty scramble right on the stroke of half time. Yeah. You could say in the game. Yeah, I think that was that was probably one of the most important goals that I scored because you know a goal at that time, a half time. I think it changes the momentum. They had scored just before, it, but I think there'd been sort of we had probably been the better team up to that point, but mm -hmm. probably not really creating an awful lot of chances and. They had been happy at that stage staying in the game, but once they went ahead, it was you know, like, they were, they were going to be real up first now. And I think for them, they probably, that's the beginning, sometimes when you score, you're vulnerable, then they can see straight away. And lucky enough for us, we were able to get back in. I, I think when, once we went down at one each, we probably at that stage thought we'd win, and they probably thought, to be honest, they probably not. They probably didn't think they'd win. And I think that, that told in the end. Then the winning goal. Yeah. Was it off the back of the head or was it off the back of the it neck? Was the back, it was the back of the head. Because I can remember people saying it was like it didn't touch and stuff. And I, I remember, because people were trying yeah. to say it was Philip Simpson OG. Yeah, the time. I, I can remember clearly getting the contact on it. It was probably just the pictures on the TV doesn't pick it up. But uh, Mackers, to be fair, always delivery was, was brilliant. And he, he put a brilliant sort of a, a cross that he, he wanted as a forward. It wasn't one where the defenders were going to be hanging over the top of you. It was, it was flat, so he just had to get a contact on it. And it was just a, a glance. For the sort of the back of my head, and the pace was on the ball, so that took it away from from Hank Elliott and that. Did it sink in much after that? Two goals, winning goals in the cup final, especially to beat your big two rivals. Yeah, that was, that was a, that did take a while probably to, to really appreciate sort of how what, what we'd done first of all as a team because that mm -hmm. was that was what everybody was about. It was about it being a team. Um, everybody had a part to play in it, and my job and Glenn's job was to score the goals and. You know, if, if it wasn't me scoring them, it would have been somebody else and probably would have been Glenn. So, you know, that was just the way it was because he, he scored a hat-trick, I think, in the in the League Cup final that year. And I, I didn't score any of that game. But uh, I think we won 3-0 and he scored a hat-trick. So it was just almost like one of us, if, well, if both of us didn't score, one of us probably would. You know, and the final was, was my chance. <laughs> Another thing that springs to mind that season was all the penalties that we're missing. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a bit ago. <laughs> no, that, that's a, it nearly gets spread around. I think Manus yeah. was probably the only one that didn't have a penalty. But, you know, we were still scoring bucket loads of goals. I think, we should still... have, I think the problem we had with that was the penalties. I think it got to the point where we were, if you miss one, you're off them. <laughs> and I think... Was that putting pressure on the rest of the I hands? think it should have been... I think it should have been probably if you miss one, you got the next one. If you miss two in a row, maybe then it's time <laughs> to, to think about it. But... I can remember I had a spell taking them and then I can't even remember who I missed against. But I remember missing one. Um, and then it was I don't know who, who I ended up taking. I can remember 
I think Jim Irvin take one in a League Cup final. I think he, he missed that as well. But it was going around the whole time, and nobody really looked comfortable taking them. I know point. it's it was because the one that stands out for me is at the Oval, that Glenn missed, and then obviously in that same day, yeah, and yeah. that same game he scored that screaming volley. Yeah. So you just think it just score. No, it just doesn't make any sense. But I suppose as well that year we're probably attacking so much, we're getting so many penalties as well. Probably got more penalties that year than the most other ones. I don't know about the stats, but that, that to me that's probably what happened. And then it started becoming a talking point. And then when that <laughs> happens, then it's possibly in the back of your head somewhere. Okay, Peter. Your success, all the goals you were scoring, them seasons then led to ultimately getting the call up for yeah. Northern Ireland. Just how special was that for you? Yeah, it was, a, it was a bit of a weird moment, just, you know, because I'd only been playing probably in the first team at Linfield 18 months before I was I was playing the reserves and stuff, and it wasn't something that you, you thought was achievable, really, you know, playing in Irish League football at that stage. But I think I'd been on, a, I think that was the November, yeah, the November against Portugal, and I'd been on a good run for Linfield, obviously, for flying. So I got called up, I think, later on at the end of the squad and actually got on for, I think, 15 minutes or so. So, no, for me, and it was a, it was a massive thing. Um, Portugal, that stage where I think they'd lost the Euros final the year before, mm -hmm. so they were, they were a really good side. Uh, and I think Ronaldo was playing in that game, but I think when I came on, he was ready off. <laughs> you know, it was something to say about that one. Tell us a little bit about your emotions when you got the phone call and how surreal did it feel then? It, it didn't seem, it didn't sink in really, it didn't, it didn't seem, as I say, possible. It's, I thought it was a prank or something like that, but <laughs> no, it was, it was always special when I got you know, called them in for Northern Ireland and I took it as a bonus, to be honest, at those stages. Um, you know, it, was, it was a bit of experience and going away. It wasn't even so much for me about getting on the matches, obviously it was great to get on. But it was even about just the training and stuff and the preparation and you know the, at a higher level to, to see that and stuff. So no, I enjoyed every opportunity I got um, for representing my country and that one was obviously a special one being the first. Then tell the people a little bit about your goal then against Georgia as well. Uh, and what... It wasn't uh, certainly wasn't a classic. Uh, <laughs> I went up with the goalkeeper. We all I, 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 think, all I think I hit the back of my shoulder or something and went in the net. Probably not. Be given as a handball or a foul in the goalkeeper. So. You know, at the end of the day, I'm claiming it, but you know, it wasn't a pretty classic goal. And back then, I think Georgia, I think we beat them 4 0. But it's something, thinking, to be very yeah, something to be very proud of. I'm thinking now where Georgia came as a nation, you know, getting there and obviously the European Championships there just passed. And back then, they were, they were also around. So fair play to them for, for turning it around. I think for, as a club, I think we had me, Alan, and Michael playing for, uh, for Northern Ireland that night. So that was a special, special night for us and obviously for the club. Okay, Peter, moving on to the next season, if yeah. you want to tell us a little bit what you remember. Yeah, that was the next year. I think we did, well, obviously did a double again. I think we beat Dungannon in the final. And at the end of that season, I think I picked up a couple of injuries. Um, and just about, I think I missed the semi-final against Cork, was it we played, didn't we, in the Satanta, I think? Yeah, that was the one. Yeah. Aidan O'Kane scored the winner. Uh, so I missed that game. and I made it back for both the, both the cup finals. Um, but I probably wasn't properly fit. And I ended up, Playing against Dungannon, um, we won, so that was the main thing. I don't think I played particularly well that, that day. And then this final the week after against Drogheda, I can remember I pulled my hamstring, actually, after about 15 minutes, just after half time, went to turn around the pitch and just completely went on me. Probably one of the, I had quite a few hamstring injury, injuries, but that was probably the worst one I had. Um, but that was obviously the last game of the season, so if you're going to do it, it's probably the best time to do it. But it was disappointing <laughs> in a cup final to, to miss out. But, uh, and obviously we lost, I think, in penalties that day. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah the, the Drogheda, yeah. Yeah, I lost penalties. A mediocre season for yourself, only scoring 31 goals that year, but yeah. a drop-off? Yeah, I had a drop-off from the year before, obviously scoring 48. <laughs> the 31 was, it was a drop-off, and I didn't play, I, I know myself, I didn't, you know, 31, you'd take any season, of course <laughs> I know, you would. I know. But I didn't play as well, you know, it wasn't just the goals, I didn't play as well that year. Um, and the, the team had still had a good season, but I don't think as a team we probably had the heights that, I had the year before, probably. Did, did you? Would you? Would you say, obviously, with such a high and then putting so much in and then not picking up any injuries? Would you say that's a bit of a factor? I know there's all this talk at the moment of modern day football and players playing too many games, and it could be a contributing factor as well. Because I think probably the year before I played probably sixty games, you know, or something like that. So you know, maybe that you're playing a lot of football, you're going to have more chance of getting injured. So it may have played a factor, but I think it's just one of the things for us as a team, probably coming from the highs of the year before being so good. I think it was inevitable, even if we played well, we we're never probably going to reach the, the same level of consistency for, for, for nine, ten months. It's very difficult to do that. In this kit, tell us a little bit about the League Cup final. Springs yeah. the man where you scored yeah. before Glenn yeah. came on and scored. 
Yep, so that kit would have, I think that was the year after, but we had obviously the kits would have been quite often two years. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we were playing. I think that game would have been February, March probably. Um, I think I scored in that final, we won that up, and then we were two one down very quickly. Uh, and it just didn't look like it was going to be our day. Uh, and I remember that stage, Glenn came on. He got the first goal. It was like, we're like brilliant, happy days, extra time. And him before <laughs> we knew it, he scored again. So I think it was his record as well, getting the goals out there as well. You know, so it was a special moment. Not only for all of us, just to win, because we were delighted to win, but we're obviously delighted for him to come on and, and be able to do, you know, and get his get his sort of goals and his record in such a you know big occasion as well. It wasn't just a run in the middle league game. Big Davy manager in this time. Just what was he like to play under? Uh, he was great. You know, he just <clears throat> he wanted us to go out and work hard. If we worked hard, he, he always said our football would do the talking and would come through. So no, he was he was great. He didn't he didn't try to do. Do too much or, or worry too much about the opposition. We would have focused a bit on them and what they did and stuff, but we would have went out with a belief that if we could play the way we could play, we would we'll, we'll win. So it worked for us. And as I say, most of the years at that stage, we had a reasonably settled team. So that probably helped too. But there was obviously still a competition for places, but it was a settled, settled side. Okay, moving on to this kit. Definitely springs to mind the Maids Irish Cup final against Coleraine. 1 0 down at half time. Brace of goals, second half to win it. Your thoughts on what stands out in that game? Yeah, that was a yeah, that was probably actually my favourite cup final out of, out of all of them. I actually really enjoyed that one, and, and it turned out to be my, at that stage. I didn't know, but it was going to be my last game before I obviously moved. Um, I remember the kit coming out and looking at it and going, I "Don't really like that. That looks like an Arsenal kit." <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Spurs fan, so I was like. <laughs> I don't know about that. They're the shorts and the socks like they redeemed it. They didn't, they didn't mind that. But no, looking back at it, it is a nice shirt, obviously, with the blue on it. it makes it different than different, um, the Arsenal. But no, I remember it was sort of different as well, uh, coming out. And obviously, we had to change kits because it was against Korean. Mm -hmm. It must have been a toss and stuff. And, and we had the word. I think it was the first time I wore it as well. So. It was, yeah. Yeah, no, it was a really, it was a really good cup final. Um, Korean, you know, played well, I think, that day as well. Again, as everybody's going to in cup finals, you know, most teams come and... They're going to give it their all and they're not going to... It, it was nearly like for a few years that if a team got ahead against us then, that they were nearly going to just fight and scrap for everything because they knew if we got back into the game or even got ahead that you you just got the feeling that they were defeated on the pitch yeah, straight away. Yeah, I think even the Dungannon one, I think they probably went, I think they went ahead that day as well. Yeah. So probably our, our, our problem, not that it was a big problem of one of those games, but if I had a went out probably and scored an early goal, uh, it would have probably knocked the stuff out of maybe Dungan and Korean, and you may have got a comfort more comfortable win. But in a sense, that makes it more enjoyable when you when you're up against it a wee bit and you, you come through in the end. Did you find much pressure going in at half time in that cup final one 0 down? I can't really remember that. See, I, I'm sure I'm sure we were. I'm sure we were. Uh, I'm sure we probably got a bit of a bit of a roasting off of the manager as well. I would imagine so because we weren't playing. I can remember that first half. We were we weren't at it at all, and I think actually we were probably. I think we were probably lucky to be only one goal behind. I don't even think we had many chances in the first half. So no, I think that first half was wasn't really good. And I think again coming out, you know, at half time when you're losing, you need an early response really mm -hmm. get back into the game. And if, uh, the goal I think came after maybe five five minutes or in the first five minutes of the second half. And do you remember much about the goal? Uh, the ball was down. I went down. Uh, I came into my feet and sort of spun. I went down on the left foot. I can just remember sort of trying to thinking right. The keeper's coming out and they're trying to narrow the angle. Just hit, first of all, hit the target. There were two great finishes, to be fair. Right yeah, the it, it was. It, it was the way. Yeah, as a striker, there were there were good there were good striker goals. Um, and I thought just hit the target, get it across the goalkeeper on the left side. And fortunately enough, it went it went in the corner. Um, and then we scored. I think pretty much. <laughs> it was clear enough. A few minutes couple later. Of minutes later. And I think that again, obviously, when he ended up winning two one, but it was probably more comfortable at that stage. Um, the win and it came actually. I think there was a bit of a clearance in the middle of the middle of the pitch. And I can remember Glenn getting the ball maybe about 25 yards out. And I just made a run off the back of the defence, header back, thinking, and I know when he's like, he'll try to slip it in. And he played a, a ball around the corner. And it was one of those, it's the first time finish. And, you know, keepers coming out, it could easily hit his legs, it made his feet. But for me, it went, I think it went through his legs and into the corner. So. Uh, worked out well again for us, but it was a, it was just taking a chance, gambling. Your partnership with Glenn, it seemed at times nearly like it was telepathic. 
you know, you knew where you were going to be. Is that something you've worked on in training, or did it just come naturally? I think, to it both just, I think it just it worked out that way in the pitch, as I say, again, we were playing with really good teams, you know, and I was fortunate enough to be playing in a good team um, who were giving you chances, and with Glenn, who was a really good footballer, he was great at dropping in. So he had dropped down and played like sort of like a 10, as people would say now, and played in the half turn, was able to play, we had a pa- great way to pass. So we were able to make the runs off the defenders, and more often than not, he found you. And if it wasn't Glenn doing it, it was, it was uh, Paul McAreevy as well, and the field had been doing it too. Okay, Peter, tell us a little bit about how the move came about to Stockport County and what it was like playing there. Yeah, um, there was sort of a bit of that summer, there'd been a bit of talk the sort of the previous summer about you know, an opportunity going across the water, maybe even in January. Um, but it was nothing really concrete until this summer, it was 2008. And I think there was, there was definitely an opportunity, there was Norwich were, I think, involved at one stage maybe, but they didn't even put a bid in. <clears throat> but it was, it was between them and Stockport, and Stockport put a bid in. Uh, at that stage, they had been promoted from League 2 to League 1, so they got up that year into League 1. So the move came about, and I thought, well, that, it was now or never really, because I was probably about 24. And, you know, looking back, probably, I would say, you want to go over when you're a bit younger, but uh, I had an opportunity and I, 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 I don't regret going at all. You know, it was something that I needed to, to at least go and try. Um, and it didn't work out for me at Stockport, but uh, it was a great club. And at the time, they had obviously, fin- I d- they didn't really know the financial trouble that was around the corner. I think with a few sort of, I think they were banking on money maybe at times from FA Cup games and stuff, which didn't turn out. We lost those games and stuff. So that, that ended up the club ended up in administration. Um, it was one of those things. But I had 18 months or so over there where I enjoyed it. I didn't play as well as I could have played, and didn't score anywhere near the amount of the goals that I wanted to score. And as a striker, it's difficult going over as a, any position. But if you go as a striker, you're expected to score goals, and I, I wasn't scoring the goals, so I have no complaints that. I wasn't in the side after a while. I wasn't doing it for them. Early on in the career, there's a goal that stands out for me. It was against Manchester City, I remember yeah. you scored. I scored against Man City in the pre-season. <laughs> yeah, that was probably as good as it gets. <laughs> that was about two weeks in, in the yeah. time there. Um, we played Man City in, I think it may have been our last pre-season game. I think they were in the Burgundy kit, if memory stands me. Yeah, that was before Man City, obviously. The, I think they were That starting, was just about the money? Yeah, I think was they were starting in. to get the money. It was the first investment, because I think right. that was their... I think they had to have... I think Sven was maybe manager, was he? I can't remember who the manager was, but I know they were, that was their first sort of mm-hmm. wave of investment, and I think they were actually bought over a game, obviously, by the owners they have now, but um, certainly that was when they were coming into their money. Um, uh, it was like a, say a, a local sort of derby in a sense, but yeah, we played then, I think it was a, a 2-2 draw. Um, but after that, uh, probably the only highlight really would have been we played Oldham on a Friday night game at home, and we beat them 3-1. That was a really good atmosphere and I scored Local that, Darwin, I scored that one, yeah, I scored yeah. that one and that was probably the, the highlight of my time there, but short but sweet. <laughs> <laughs> all, all joking aside, was it difficult to decide to leave Limfield at that stage? Yeah. I, know, I know it's a fantastic opportunity, you can't turn down, but just yeah. how difficult was it? It was really difficult. Leave Limfield? It, it was difficult. Like, I remember come up and say you know, goodbye to everybody and it was really, really at that stage going, oh, I don't know if I want to go. But I knew I had to take the opportunity. Um, I'd worked hard for it, you know, and as much as I love playing for Linfield, you have to go and see what level you can get to because it just takes another move after, after if you go there and do well, another move and you, you don't know how, how far you could go. So I don't regret going. It's just unfortunately it didn't work out. Maybe it wasn't the right club. I had a lot of injuries. I had a, cl- a collapsed lung and stuff. And, uh, it was just, it, it didn't work out the way I'd have wanted it to work out. But it was, a, it was a good time in, in, in my life and I enjoyed, enjoyed living in Manchester for 18 months. A game then that stands out was the Glen Ferguson testimonial match, which yeah. was against Stockport County. I believe you played a half for both teams. Yeah, I was the start of, I think, that really started my second season at Stockport. So I played a half for both teams in that. And then it wasn't long after that, I think we lost a load of players before the season started. That's what's probably the beginning of August. And we lost a lot of players, and the season we were it was terrible. We were, we were losing every week, and it wasn't enjoyable at all. Uh, and I think that that stage came around about the December, and I got a, sort of told that they were trying to they were trying to offload some of the more senior players, and which had been sort of classed as at that stage. Um, and then an opportunity that came back to go to the field, to come back to the Blues on loan um, for the remainder of the season. And for me, I thought, well, I'll go back. I'm going to start enjoying my football again, so that's what happened then, and for, from sort of the end of, I think it was near the end of January. Mentally, how difficult was it, as you say, they're losing maybe heavily in some games, 
Like, what was that like, especially obviously when you're yeah. them feeling the demand that you have? Obviously, you couldn't be taking them, so yeah, of yeah, heavy tankings here. No, like. no, losing games, it was just like you were getting, you were getting actually used to losing, and I was, I was like, I just hated it, you know, as a, as a player. But it was unfortunately, it was it's just where we were as a club, you had to accept it, we weren't, mm -hmm. weren't good enough, got relegated, and then like the club after that had another two or three relegations, like in a short time, and now finally they're. Yeah, I've got a bit of investment. I was just about to say you could over the last couple of seasons that started to rise again. Yeah, it's, yeah, it just goes to show, you know, what can happen at times. There, I think they've got new owners here seem to be very good for them. So they've, they've invested and they're now up in the they're up in the league league one. I think they're not. So yeah, they're going they're going well. I don't. Mm -hmm. I think it's a size of a club probably. That's their, their probably the level. You know, if they can be a good league one club, but mm -hmm. potentially I suppose they could always have the chance of further investment, maybe of a championship level and mm -hmm. stuff, which would be. Be really good to see. Okay, Peter. Before we move on to this season, tell us a little bit about then what it was like coming back on loan to the club. Yeah, well, it was coming back into a team that was. I think at that stage we weren't doing great, but we were up in the air. Obviously, you know, when we had a chance in the <coughs> in the cup and in the league. So for me, it was about just coming back. I thought, well, worst case scenario, it's sort of six months, whatever, and, and I'll enjoy join football again. And that's what it was all about: just coming back and enjoying playing football. And I, I didn't score that many goals. I don't think I scored maybe ten or eleven. But I was just enjoying, you know, I, I was playing okay, but I, I wasn't scoring a lot. But it was great just to be back involved with a, with a team that was competing for, for trophies again. One of them was an important goal, Irish Cup final against Portadown. Yeah, at Portadown won again. I think we actually did go 2-0 up that day and you'd have thought we were home and host. And to be fair, Portadown pulled it back in and they, they gave a good account of themselves and probably, you know, we feel, feel unlucky not to even get extra time in that match. I think, I think it ends up 2-1, but... No, that was another another great day, um, and another, another at the end of another good season in terms of, you know, at Christmas it didn't look great probably for the club, but we ended up with another double. Coming back then to Linfield permanently, how about how did that come about? Um, I think I, I remember going back to Stockport for a week's training pre pre season, um, going back over there. I um, didn't really know what was going to happen. Um, I think I didn't even, didn't even have my apartment over anymore. I think I stayed in the hotel for a week. Um, and then at the end of the week, they wanted to have a converse, conversation with me. So I went down with my agent and stuff, and they were more or less, uh, you knew straight away from the tone, tone of the conversation, they wanted, they, wanted, they wanted rid of me and stuff. And that was, that, I didn't mind that. It, it, it was, you know, I think at that stage, it was a new ownership, um, and they wanted to cut costs. And, but we ended up, you know, coming to an agreement. And, I left the club and it was pretty quickly sorted out that I was coming back to Linfield then. Was there only one club you wanted to come back to at that stage? Yeah, I had a few chance opportunities of thinking going on, on, low, on trial with different teams in England and I kind of thought, you know, I think I just, just got married and stuff and I thought I, needed to, I wanted to settle down somewhere. Um, and I think it came to the decision, look, I, 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 things haven't worked out um, and, I, and, I, and I ended up coming back, you know, so uh, I probably... It was maybe a bit later on in the summer before the agreed, agreed to come back, but yeah, I was happy enough, I think, with the decision that really I'd had my time in England and it hadn't worked out. I, I don't think probably going anywhere else, you know, some of the clubs that had, would have had a chance to go into, I don't think it would have, it would have really succeeded there anyway, to be honest with yeah. you. What's your memories then that stand out from this season, which was the 125th? Anniversary top? Yeah, that that kit that was sent you earlier would be the, my favourite one out of all, all the ones that we wore. I thought it was a really, really good kit. Um, looked well with a, I think it was this white, plain white shorts and plain red socks, no mm -hmm. real design on them. And I just thought it was a, a real classic sort of kit. Um, and I also didn't have a, a collar, didn't really like shirts with collars, you know, no Indian stuff. So it was a really clean sort of kit. Um, in terms of matches, it would be the cup final against Crusaders mm -hmm. were. We were losing 1-0 until the last couple of minutes. We managed, um, G I think Jamie Mulgrew came on and sort of changed the match with a couple of shots. And it was a wet day and their goalkeeper... Spilled one? Spilled, I think he Chris spilled Keenan, I think, I think it was. I think he spilled two. two. Yeah. Spilled the first one. I was able to get in ahead of them. He spilled another one. I got in and sort of contested it with him and it fell in the Mark McAllister mm -hmm. scored. So, you know, it's just those wee things. You know, as a striker, you a wet ball, just get it and gamble. And, you know, again, lucky enough for us, it, it turned out that we were able to go on and get another, which would have been my last, you no, know, one more, one more Irish Cup final of that. Yeah. Your record in the Irish Cup's quite remarkable. You never lost a game. No. Was, that, <laughs> was that all we spoke about? Oh, Peter's back, he's playing today. Uh, because I remember the season that you go on, I remember 
we lost quite late on to Cliftonville at the yeah. Oval one night, 3-2. We were 2-1 up, sort of in cruise control, and then they scored out and off in 90 minutes, I think, in 94 minutes. And, you know, it was the first Irish Cup game, I think, we'd lost in like five or six seasons. Yeah, no, and, uh, it was one of those things. I didn't know about it, obviously, because mm. it, was, it was always reported, and had, had a good record of goals as well, obviously, in it. But for us, we didn't really talk about it in the changing room and stuff, but it was just weird. Some of the matches I think I missed out for, obviously, one for illness I and know. lost. And then it was away that time, but I think then we lost some of the other ones down further on. I wasn't selected for it because I wasn't in the team. So it was just one of those ones. It was maybe in the stand or was injured or whatever. Um, picked up more and more injuries down the line. And this game, a lot of games, so um, that would probably be the, the case down, down the line. It was just one of those weird, weird sort of stats. It's a good start to have. It was a good start. I loved the Irish Cup. It was always, you know, especially the Irish Cup final. Never lost one. Didn't as well. Yeah, and you know, I was lucky enough to play in them. You know, as you say, get winners' medals and, and score goals. So you know, I, I really out of all the tournaments, the Irish Cup was was the one that I ever look back on. Probably the most special memories. On. Have you got a favourite goal from your whole um, football career? Probably, you know, probably the two against Corian. I enjoyed those goals. And there was one against Glen Torn in the Irish Cup semi final around about that time. I'm trying to think what kill it I don't think it was that kill. It may have been the one before with the squares. Mm -hmm. um, scored from outside the box, which was a rarity for me. So I, that, that one would probably be up there. And um, to me, no, I, I just wanted to score goals. I didn't really. People want to score good goals. I didn't, to me, all the goals were good. So I didn't mind if they were, if they were from a yard out. They were from the penalty spot wherever, you know, I just wanted to score goals. But the cup final goals are the ones you remember is Shelbourne the final against them as well. So any of the cup final goals really would be the ones that would, would stand out. But probably the Shelbourne one and the um and the two against Korean because, you know, there were there were good strikers goals and there were good finishes. A couple of them were first time finishes, which as a striker you sort of you, you still live for. Have you got a memorable match that stands out from your whole football career? Uh, Probably the Tanta Cup final, you know, we went down there not really expecting, probably, well, not that we expected to lose, but we didn't, we knew we were up against it going into a really hard place, so that was probably one to stand out, and then probably the Clean Sweep Cup final, those would be probably the two which would really stand out to me, um, looking back on it, but you know, any of the Cup finals were, were memorable, especially the ones that we won. What about a difficult opponent? Did you ever see yourself saying, oh, playing against this great centre half today or someone that stands out? I never really, I honestly I didn't go into the games worrying about the opposition. Um, I knew I had a good team who would give me chances in most matches, so oh, I, you know, I had to worry about myself and the movement and stuff and trying to get in the right place. But yeah, probably at that stage, Glenn's over the years would be in a lot of the better teams. Um, so you probably had Paul Lehman was always you know, mm -hmm. a strong, strong competitor and stuff. So you had him and Colin Nixon for the Glens, but you know, other teams had good defenders too, you know, at um, Kobe and stuff and some of the finals would have played against good, good defenders. So no, it was, I didn't really as I say worry about who we were playing against, just go out and try to do the job. Moving on then, to the following season, is there anything that stands out? I know the white kid here, remember it was worn for the first time, Irish Cup final against Crusaders, where thankfully we won 4-1. Yep, I remember, <clears throat> I remember that day. Um, other than that, those kids don't really bring a lot of good memories back from we weren't very good, to be honest. The next season we completely, you know, we fell way off where we were, uh, the level. Just probably was it was probably one of those moments where the, sort of the team is coming to an end, mm -hmm. uh, and all of a sudden, like everybody was out of form. There wasn't many people playing well in, in those kits. So obviously they weren't weren't that in the cup final. It was a, it was a good memory, but after that, I don't even remember wearing too often. I ever really that one, but I can remember that one and. Looking at it, I remember I didn't score too many goals in it. <laughs> How challenging was that at the time? Obviously, that was coming to near the end of Big Davies' tenure at the club as well. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a really... You know, it's part and parcel of football, I suppose. You know, everybody has their run and stuff, and mm -hmm. we had our, had our run for... You thought it was never going to end, but obviously, you know, teams aren't standing still, and they're, they're pushing on to try to catch us. And I don't know, maybe injuries, right? For me personally, it was injuries and stuff, and loss of form. Um, and as a team, we were all probably going through that, you know. And again, to talk about settled teams, those weren't settled teams, I don't think. Probably a big sort of churn of players playing each, each week, you know. There wasn't really the same consistency in, in team selection, so it didn't, it probably didn't work out well. Okay, Peter, moving on then, moving away from Umbro. We had our first season in Monique. Anything that stands out for you here? Again, just at this part, probably, it was 
like Ian picking up more and more injuries out of the team, more, more at this stage. And um, at this point, not really wearing this kit too often. I have these kits. Um, that one I probably remember scoring a late goal against Korean, the win 2 1, I think. Um, probably the highlight wearing that. And that, I think, was what I could, I think, away to Glenavon the last day. Uh, Davies' last game, I think, maybe. Was that his last game? I think we won that game. I think I scored a couple of goals in that, so that was probably really the highlight of those goals games. But again, another another disappointing season for the club and me. And uh, that start point, it was probably becoming a bit poor player in the squad and stuff. And uh, yeah, it wasn't really really a good season for for anybody. I think Aaron Burns that year was he starting to come through and scoring goals? Maybe, yeah, that, uh, yeah, maybe, I think maybe so, been yeah. that, that year he started to play, you know, more more regularly. He's obviously played years before, but I remember scoring a lot of goals in one of those kits. Maybe in the next one, not too sure. Okay, Peter, then, moving on to your final season at the club. Yep. Uh, this shirt here was the last shirt you ever wore for Nymphid. Your thoughts, then, on that season? Yeah, again, not playing regularly, more and more injuries. Um, disappointing, actually, I think Warren Feeney came in that year. Uh, we started off well, I think we'll probably uh, beat AAKA in the home, home leg and end up losing out over there, but we started pre-season pretty well. Um, and then, just, as I say, I got injured. I was out of the team for a long, for a long, long spell. I think I injured at the end of August. I think it was like a hip injury. Um, and it lingered and stuff, and I uh, came back and it was just, I couldn't stay fit again. Came back, I think, maybe February, March, played a game, started a game, pulled my hamstring, and it was just like, at that stage, I knew it was just like, I knew obviously the club probably wouldn't be wanting to get, offer me a contract, which was understandable considering that they hadn't really hadn't contributed much over the previous couple of years, um, and I wasn't I, I wasn't enjoying the football at that stage. It just wasn't because I wasn't able to I wasn't able to do the things that I wanted to do, but my body sort of let me down and stuff. But it was just one of those things that came around probably earlier than I, I expected. But um, I had obviously all the memory, the good memories and stuff, and it's just part and parcel of football. You know, everybody thinks they're going to go on and play in their mid-30s, but not everybody gets that luck. So it's just one of the things that sort of, I think it was turning 30 and this map. No, I think that's that's probably going to be the end. Even when I, you know, I was released by Lentfield, I spoke to a few clubs and stuff, and I, I knew myself, I just didn't. You know, I went to maybe another club who'd expected me to play 40 games a season. And physically, I couldn't do it. So I'd have been landing myself under them to go and, and take a wage somewhere and sit and be injured. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. So. The last game was against Portadown, uh, which I played in the last game of the season. Um, so I remember going down there and we, I think we drew one each, did we? I think so. Uh, and hit the post in the, in the last minute, so I thought if that had been a nice way to go off a goal, but really it, it wouldn't have meant much anyway in terms of um, the, how the season went. I think we finished uh, disappointingly again. We got beaten a cup, I think, down there. Um, I wasn't playing, I was injured at that stage, and the league sort of. You know, I think I don't know if it came maybe third or fourth or something like that. It wasn't the, it certainly wasn't the vintage season. For I think that was the means. start of the two Cliftonville years of dominance. Then yeah, it would have been Cliftonville had a really good team around then. Mm -hmm. To be fair, yeah, Gormley and Boyce up front scoring loads of goals. You know, they came along and they had their time. I think probably Crusaders as well were. That yeah, that was that was starting to go the start. Them, starting to have a couple of years. So both yeah. of them had a had a couple of years of of doing well and winning leagues and stuff. And at that stage, we were going through. You know, a, a really lean spell. I think until I think David came in the next year. Would he came in? The, I think it was warm. Maybe started the next season, but then David came in. So no, it was um, it was disappointing seasons. But you know, you have to take it when you had all the all the success beforehand. That was one of those things. With Warren coming in, just how much did that change everything around the club? Obviously, with Big Davy being here for so long. Yeah, it was. It was really different. So it was, but uh, it's hard really different. <laughs> It, it was like a blur, really, for, for me personally. Obviously, because if I look back now, I, I think back of really of Davy being the manager. But I got on well with Warren and stuff. And you know, at the end, and I remember when he was telling me that the club weren't offering me a contract and all of us, he did it really well. And it was I appreciated the way he took the time to speak to me personally and, and do it um, face to face and stuff. So no, I got on well with him. Um, and I, I think he had started again the next season quite well. Um, but he obviously had the chance to think to move back to England. And, you know, I think that was something that he wanted to do at that stage. So um, this is a change for the club, and it was massive from what they been there. I don't know, twenty odd years and stuff. And it seems strange for him not to be the manager. How difficult was it to hear that news that Linfield weren't going to offer you a contract, especially being here so long and you know being a cult hero? You could 
Yeah. Think you still are? Yeah. No, as far as I'm uh, concerned. For, for me, it was disapp- obviously it was disappointing, but you know, and I, it, you can kind of see how things are going. That you know, at time you, as a player, and especially when you've been around and played as many games as I had, and you you know how things are, how, how they're looking and stuff, and you just have an idea that your your time's coming to an end, and it wasn't. I can remember when he he wanted to be up with me. I knew what I knew what was coming. It was a, I think it was maybe about the beginning of the week before the Portland Down match. Um, so I knew what was coming, but as I say. It didn't. It didn't make me get any easier. But part of me was almost like a. I wouldn't say a relief, but it was like you know, I was. I, I wasn't as disappointed as you might think. Having all the years I had, I thought, well, I, I kind of agreed with the decision, so I was able to accept it, and it wasn't something that I that I you know, felt bad about or, or felt any any ba- uh, bad towards the club about. Was it difficult then, in general, just to give up, retire from football altogether? Um, well, I, I, you know, as I say, I could have probably went and played somewhere else, but to me, it was I, had, I wanted to play for Linfield when I was in the Irish League. And I could have went and played for, some, for, for a smaller club and, you know, maybe had a cup here or there, but I, I knew for, for you know, if, it'd been different if I felt I could contribute and mm-hmm. do well over time. If I did, I would have no problem going on. You know, at the end of the day, I wasn't, you know, Linfield had released me. It was up to me to go and I could go and play for anyone I wanted to, but I knew I didn't, physically didn't have it, you know, the injury for piling up and, uh, I think it was like arthritis and stuff in the hip at that stage. So it was it was a decision that really down the line. Do I want to try to play another couple of years here for to have more probably bother with it later in life and stuff? So I decided no, it wasn't really worth it because as I say, I wasn't able to do the things I wanted to or enjoy the game. Well, Peter, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much. It's very pleasure. an absolute pleasure to hear some of your no, magical great. memories. It's very much appreciated for Linfield TV. Thank Cheers. you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.